Let's begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this invitation to Islam. Let's recognize that this is not a right. This is a privilege. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to fulfill this privilege of being Muslim. This is a great honor. This is something that we should embrace with all our energy. Today, inshallah, let's talk about good conduct. Now, Islam is in complete agreement with a very important principle of democracy. And that is equal opportunity for all. Everyone has the same opportunity. Why do I say this? I say this because you and I, common people, having no friends in high places, having no royal blood, having no obese bank accounts, can become the nearest and dearest to Rasulullah. How is this possible? How can common people become the nearest and dearest to Rasulullah? Rasulullah said, The nearest and dearest to me on the day of judgment will be those who are best in conduct. What is good conduct? You know, good conduct goes beyond being a nice guy, smiling, laughing, shaking hands, accepting all invitations. It goes beyond that. In fact, Islam is so perfect. Islam is so complete. It lays out the credentials of good conduct in many human interactions. Good conduct in dealing with parents. Good conduct in dealing with the enemy. Good conduct in eating. <coughs> Good conduct in times of panic. Good conduct in business. Good conduct in charity. Good conduct when slaughtering an animal. Islam is so complete. It lays out good conduct in all these interactions. Good conduct in marriage, etc., etc. The, the numbers just go on. Today, inshallah, let's just take good conduct in two interactions. In the future, inshallah, we will look at others. But now, let's just look at two. And let's start with the first one, which is good conduct in dealing with parents. This holds the key to paradise, my respected Muslims. Good conduct in dealing with parents holds the first word to paradise. In good conduct, in dealing with parents, Allah lays out two direct <coughs> commands. The first command, Allah says, وَقَلَ رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and be kind to your parents. Avoidance of shirk and kindness to parents in the same sentence. Tawheed and kindness to parents in the same breath. My respected Muslims, this tells me that I should think very, very carefully before I commit an elderly parent to an old age home. Before I do this, I should look very clearly at what I am sacrificing. <coughs> the second command, Anishkurli Waliwali Dek. Show gratitude to me 
and to thy parents. Gratitude to Allah and parents. At the same time, this again tells me how highly Allah ranks kindness to parents. In that he compares gratitude to him and parents at the same time. This again tells me, my respected brothers and sisters, that I should think very carefully before I raise my voice at a parent, before I disobey a parent, before I cause the displeasure of a parent. Now I know many people would say, well, my parents were not good parents. They failed me in many instances. They did not provide the best. You know, Allah tramples upon such excuses and such accusations by saying, Allah tramples upon this sort of logic. Allah says, وَإِن جَاهَلَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِهِ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِعِلْ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَسَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ عَلَىٰ بَيْنَيْهِ Even if they strive to make you join in worship with me, things of which you have no knowledge, <coughs> obey them not, <coughs> yet deal with them in this life with justice and consideration. And in so doing, you will be the one who turns to Allah. My respected Muslims, this tells us, even if they try to make me a non-believer, I cannot ostracize them. I cannot divorce them. I have to give them justice in this life. I owe them. Look at how highly Allah ranks justice to parents. The moving story of Uwais Karni, may Allah be pleased with him, should make us all think about mothers in a whole new light. Uwais Karni was born in Yemen. His father died when he was a mere child, as a result of which he became the man in the house. He accepted Islam when he was 17 and on that occasion he was invited to Medina to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But love and dedication to his mother, his blind, aged mother, was so high on his agenda that he said, no thank you, I can't do it right now. As a result of which Uwais Karni never saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not become a companion as a result of this. Now in my one-dimensional cultural interpretation of Islam, I would have given Uwais Karni a failing grade. What? Not go to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Fail. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw the situation completely different. Before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, before he passed on, he said to Hazrat Umar, he said, uh, Hazrat Umar Abdul al Khattab, he said to Ali bin Abi Talib, if you ever meet Uwais Karni, ask him to make dua for you. Ask him to seek forgiveness on your behalf. <laughs> and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went one step further. He said, on the day of account, Uwais Karni will be stopped at the gates of paradise. And he will be allowed to enter only after he had selected 200,000 to go with him. My respected Muslim, for the record, a martyr is permitted to take 70,000 into paradise with him. Uwais Karni will take 200,000. This should make us think about mothers in a whole new light. Now let's raise the bar a little higher. What about non-Muslim parents? What about non-Muslim parents if they're not even my parents? 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam provided the answers to these questions on the day of the conquest of Makkah. On that day, on that glorious day, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the haram, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, brought his pagan father to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brought his pagan father to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw this elderly gentleman, he said to Abu Bakr, why did you bring him here? You, I would have gone to him. Here's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On this momentous occasion, with so much to do, being ready to visit a pagan father. Islam is so high in where it sets parents. This is the password to Jannah. This is the key to Jannah. Those of us who have parents should carry them literally on a golden platter. Number two. Let's look at good conduct in dealing with the enemy. Like I said, Islam is so perfect, so complete, that it lays out the rules for these interactions. It's not just my say-so, it's what Islam says. <coughs> now let's review a few guidelines in dealing with the enemy. A. Return evil with good. Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةِ إِدْفَحْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ أَدَاوَةٌ كَعَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيرٌ Evil and good are not equal. Return evil with better, and then your sworn enemy will become your bosom companion, your bosom friend. Now I know what some of you are saying, or some of you are thinking, where has this old guy been? Has he been asleep in some cave for many years? Does he not realize that this is the 21st century? Does he not realize that this is the age of LA fitness? This is the age of aggression, man. This is the age of Twitter. This is the age of Tumblr. This is the age of Facebook. Any response less than aggression will be interpreted as weakness. That's how people think today. You know, Allah must have anticipated this aggressive, shallow mode of thinking. Because Allah goes further and Allah says, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ سَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُحَذٍ عَظِيمٍ you know, no one will be given such goodness except those who practice patience and self-restraint. Those of the highest great, great fortune. In other words, no one will be able to respond to evil with good except those who are truly blessed. Those who uh, appreciate humility, courage, strength, obedience and self-control to align themselves with this command of Allah. So to return evil with good does not mean I've been asleep in the cave. It means that a person fears Allah more than he fears public opinion. B. Never sacrifice justice and honesty, integrity, even when you deal with your enemy. Justice and integrity is paramount, even when you deal with your enemy. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada'a bil qis wa la yadrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu. I'adilu, huwa aqrabu li taqwa wa attaqu allah inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalu. Oh, you who believe, Stand out firmly for Allah as witnesses to fair dealings. And not, let not the hatred of others towards you cause you to depart from justice. Let not the hatred of others towards you
cause you to depart from justice. Be just. That is next to piety. And fear Allah, for Allah is well acquainted with all that we do. Let's look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam implementing this ayah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends an army of 3,000 to face the Byzantine confederate force of 200,000, they were outnumbered 70 to 1. If you do the math, 3,000 versus 200,000, they, they were outnumbered 67 to 1. But before they left, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized to them the laws of compassionate engagement. He said to them, fight the enemy in the name of Allah, not because you hate them. Don't steal property, don't destroy property. Don't kill men, women, children, old men, women, kill children, and religious leaders. He didn't say don't kill imams. He said don't kill religious leaders. Don't destroy homes. Don't cut down trees. Don't kill wounded people. Never use disproportionate force. Name one Muslim leader today who follows this command of Allah. Who follows this example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Name one. The silence is deafening. You cannot name one. Huzaifa and his father, may Allah be pleased with both of them, tried to migrate from Makkah to Medina. On the way, they were intercepted by the pagans and arrested. They were accused of going to fight against the Quraysh. So they said, no, we're just going to Medina. We're fighting no one. And on that plea, they were released. When they got to Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking for conscripting an army to go to Badr. And of course, Huzaifa and his father, may Allah be pleased with them, were there in the front lines ready to fight at Badr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, no, I cannot have you. You gave your word to the Quraysh that you won't fight against them. And in this situation, our integrity and our promise reigns supreme. Even when we deal with our enemy, my respected Muslim, we have to have integrity. Not fictional integrity. Integrity that was exemplified by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number C. Turn down the intensity. Make allowance for the fact that Allah can change any heart. Allah can melt any heart. And therefore, when we face our enemy, we must turn down the intensity. We must make allowances for the fact that Allah can change any heart. Allah says, أَسَلَّاهُ أَنْ يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ آدَيْتُمْ مِنْكُمْ مَوَلَّهُ وَاللَّهُ قَدِيرُ it may be that Allah will grant love and friendship between those whom you currently yourself and those whom you currently hold as your enemies. For Allah has power over all things and Allah is unforgiving, most merciful. Here Allah is saying, may turn down the intensity because I can change anyone's heart. Your enemy today could be your friend tomorrow. How did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam implement this ayah? You see, we don't have to think about it. We just have to copy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was surrounded at Badr and the situation looked real bleak, what did he do? He's dealing with his enemy. And he says, Rabbi khfirli qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu. Oh Allah, have mercy on my people, for they do not know. Even in dealing with his enemy, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making allowance for the fact 
that Allah can melt any heart. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was pummeled and stoned out of sight, <coughs> and he's walking back to Mecca, walking back, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, and the angel of the mountains made an offer to him. They said, we will bury Taif under two mountains of rubble. Just give us your word. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, no. Maybe one day they will have children who will worship Allah alone and none but Allah. Which leader today is capable of this? The silence is deafening. Where, what are we practicing? Where are we getting our Islam from? Obviously from the internet, not from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, during the Battle of Bunayn, the troops of Taqif were defeated. And they took refuge in a castle in Taif. They retreated and they took refuge in this castle. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid siege to this castle for 20 days. At the end of 20 days, he decided to raise the siege, much to the concern of his army. And they said, oh Rasulullah, before we go, at least raise the curse of Allah against these people. They are our enemy. Raise the curse of Allah upon them. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Allah, guide the thaqif and bring them to us as Muslims. This is the Islam we should be practicing. This is the standard. This is what is delineated when it comes to interactions in life. We'll stop here inshallah. Next time we'll do more examples of interactions and what Islam says should be our conduct. Who said, being the nearest and dearest to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that day is easy. It is not easy. It requires us to put our shoulders to the grindstone. It requires control. It requires a lot of piety, trust in Allah, fear for Allah alone. The son of now will say that Muhammad Bala Ali is the Holy. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa Allah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وذنوب والدينا ومشائقنا وجميع المؤمنين أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لأهل القبور من المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات ارفع لهم الدرجات وكفر عنهم السيئات يا رب العالمين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا عاتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يعمل بالأرض والإحسان وإنتاع القربة وينحى للفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون